So today I'm going to be talking about foods that are not good for our gut health. So our gut health is responsible uh, based on the balance in our gut of the good bacteria and the not so good bacteria. And basically whenever the good bacteria get outnumbered and the bad bacteria outgrow the good bacteria, there's an imbalance and that imbalance is called dysbiosis. Now there are foods that we eat which encourage that. Now before we get into what they are, I just wanted to tell you what the good bacteria are responsible for. The good bacteria reduce inflammation, make us healthy, lean, give us longevity. Uh, the bad bacteria are responsible for an increase in inflammation, for upsetting the digestive system, as well as for acne and other health issues. So the first item on the list is refined sugar. Now what happens when we consume refined sugar is that the bad bacteria love it and they keep on multiplying. This results in the good bacteria getting outnumbered. The microbiome is inhibited by tens and trillions of microorganisms. That's a very complex uh, ecosystem in our body which we never even think about so often. Uh, this affects virtually all aspects of our health. Now in our microbiome, when our good bacteria have, is about six times more than the bad bacteria, we're fine. But when that balance gets affected by eating things with refined sugar, the pathogenic bacteria, which is the not good bacteria, increases. And our internal mucosal membrane, which protects the barrier from our intestine so that the food does not get into our bloodstream, that starts thinning out and makes it permeable. And what happens is the unwanted parts of our food or the undigested parts of our food go through it. And this is what we understand as the leaky gut. So, which is why refined sugar is not one of the good things to eat for our gut health. Um, artificial sweeteners, all our, you know, uh, equal and sugar-free do the same thing, as well as foods that contain high fructose syrup. They have the same effect as refined sugar. The third item on the list is fried and overprocessed foods. Fried and processed foods. These have the same effect as sugar because when they break down the components, they feed the bad bacteria and not to mention other unsavory health disadvantages. Packaged foods or foods with additives. Now these additives are responsible for causing inflammation and these can result in the beginning of irritable bowel syndrome. So the next on the list is gluten. So not everybody uh, is affected by gluten in the same way, but gluten is shown to have some impact on our gut bacteria. Procure the best quality that you can, uh, organic and heirloom kind of wheat would be the best. Inorganic foods and GMO foods. They of course contain a lot of chemicals and glyphosate, which is a herbicide, which is commonly used over GMO foods, does not have a good impact on our gut microbiome. Too much alcohol and high saturated fat, animal protein fat, all of these tend to feed the bad bacteria, which we don't want, especially things like butter and fatty cuts of meat. They really do have that impact. Antacids. Now, very often people tend to take antacids whenever they're feeling a little acidic. So people who consume antacids need to understand that these actually reduce the gastric juices, making them more susceptible to bacterial infections such as salmonella. And they also don't allow the good bacteria to survive because the pathogenic ones tend to thrive because the gastric juices are less acidic. The last one on the list is antibiotics. Antibiotics are sometimes unavoidable in emergencies and in extreme health conditions. But what is important to know is antibiotics affect the good and the bad bacteria. And a single treatment of antibiotics can have a large impact on the composition of your gut bacteria. And it can affect it for as long as two years. Uh, so I know it's unavoidable sometimes, but what, it's, what is important is that to increase the immunity, uh, to have a better lifestyle, better nutrition, so that the need for antibiotics goes down. 
and if you do consume them then pay special focus uh, to making sure that your gut is colonized by the good bacteria by taking more probiotic rich foods and also eating clean uh, after the antibiotic treatment. So I hope you find this video useful. Uh, please share it with your friends and family and subscribe to our channel for more such content.